say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to our country kitchen. We're the farmers. This is our kitchen. Look at this cornucopia. Isn't it beautiful? Cornucopia. You know what that means? What's that mean? I'm not sure, but it's like a big horn with all the, the horn of plenty. Okay. You remember that, seeing that I around Thanksgiving? I remember that, I remember that. This Look, is beautiful, isn't it, all the colors? It's a fall bounty, and it's beautiful. Our friend Mac brought those out here. This is a daikon radish. Really? We could use that for a potato, but it's got a little bite to it. But here's what I got going on. Years and years and years ago, I felt like I was a kid with Kentucky Field. I made a beef stew that Ryle would have enjoyed with his basic trinity, which is the red wine, the bouillon, yep. and the currant jelly. That's right. Kelly, I was experimenting one time and I made something for her as a venison roast. We're doing beef tonight. Mm -hmm. But it was a venison roast and what I thought is, okay, instead of the wine and the bouillon and the currant jelly, which is a beautiful thing, I thought, what if I did a the alcohol would be a stout. The sweet would be a brown sugar, and then we have a nice mustard. Yummy. Now the thing about making a really good beef stew is getting the beef cooked. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hours, two, three hours. If you're using something like this, which has already been cooked. You're there. You're there. We're gonna take this, look here. We had this leftover prime rib. Look which this, I can't believe we have any leftovers. Look at this beautiful. <laughs> now, what you just said there, you just touched on something. How can you have any prime rib left over? Can you make a 10 pounder for three people? <laughs> that's exactly right. Now remember prime rib, if you can talk your butcher into saying that's a standing rib roast. That's right. Bone in or bone out. Yeah. It's a roast. Right. It's a beautiful, wonderful roast, but a lot of times they go on sale and if you can ask for a standing rib roast, you can get that price down and basically it's prime rib. It's always cheaper when I ask for the bigger piece for oh, some reason, is. I get a better price. Now there's only three of us, so you don't have to make a lot. I'd say that's probably about two pounds. If you're making it for a bigger group, I'd use more, obviously. If you'll cut those onions up in little fingernail sized pieces, maybe even a little bit bigger. I like to see some pieces of onion. So now normally I would brown the meat, but you know, I think the only thing I would do while browning this meat is to toughen it up a little bit. And there's no sense in doing that. It's actually got a, a crusty exterior with some beautiful taste. My dry rub recipe. So I'm not gonna brown those. Normally if I had a piece of venison or if I had some beef, I would brown that. You ready for onions to go in? Yeah, go ahead. So we're gonna get these nice and translucent and, and maybe, maybe just a little bit brown around the edges. So I'm gonna continue to cut my little pieces of meat over here, bite-sized. Let me take care of potatoes for you? You can. Let's How many you want? Up, let's cut those up in. I will probably use all of that. Okay. Now I thought about using that this is a radish, by the way, that daikon radish. Um, and I may cut, put a couple pieces in there and see if, see if I can let you figure out which one's the potato and which one's the daikon radish. You know, when there's the first hint of fall in the air and it starts to get a little bit cool, you got cool mornings and cool evenings, Nikki and Kelly are both, fix this soup, fix that soup, soup. fix this Always, stew, yes. fix that stew. I'm looking at those beautiful carrots. Wow. I'm not sure I want to peel those. They've been washed, they look good. Let's cut them into bigger pieces. Well, I'm just gonna cut the little tails off here. Yeah. Oh. Here's another thing you can do. You can can beef. I know that sounds strange to a lot of folks, but that used to be pretty regular process. Canning meat, canning venison, canning chicken. It's a good way to store it, put it out of the way. It has a pretty good shelf life. And here's a video of us canning some venison. When that comes out, it is as tender as it can be, and it tastes like beef, the venison does. 
The longest part of this process is getting your meat cooked. Mm -hmm. That's already cooked. That's already done. You see where we're going? Mm -hmm. Ooh, let's cut some of this up. Let's okay. cut just a little bit of this. We'll put like, cut them the same size of potatoes and, and let's see if you can pick one out. How much of it do you it want? I don't know. Let's take it like that much. This much? Yep. All right. That's looking mighty nice. That smells like a radish. Smells good. It's really like a turnip. I think. All right, now you can use turnips in this too, by the way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop my meat in here. And it's already flavored. It's already got all kinds of wonderful spices on it. Now I'm going to come back with my stout. I'm going to put one 12 ounce in there and I'm, I'm going to have another one on standby just in case. And I'm going to go ahead and add four cups of beef broth. And now I'm going to bring this to a boil. And again, we've cut the time down probably by an hour to an hour and a half already. Because the meat's done. Because you know it doesn't take long to get the vegetables going. Close your eyes. I'm going to see if you can tell what this is. Uh oh, I'm terrible at this. Um, I know what it is. I know you know. You put it in with your sauerkraut. Caraway seed. Ta da! You get I'm a so special I'm proud of myself. Prize. I'm a little bit slow. Put a little caraway seed in there. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's kind of magic. You know what, Nikki, let's go ahead and put the carrots and the potatoes okay. and the daikon radish in there. And That's they look gonna be... like they're going to disappear. You're not going to know, are you? You're not going to know. We're going to take some pepper. I like some pepper and some salt and some bouillon right here. That's about, that's a heaping, heaping teaspoon. Yes, it is. Of bouillon. That almost looked like a tablespoon. That was a lot. It probably was. Let's say a tablespoon. I bet it was a tablespoon. Now look at that, it's already looking good. Now, you know what, I'll just use it at same spoon. Okay. Let's take our stone ground mustard. There's... That's about two tablespoons I put in there. Two tablespoons. About two tablespoons. Like my old buddy showed me, you've got the uh, salty, you gotta have some sweet. sweet. That's probably around two and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. Now look what we got here. I'm gonna get that up to a big rolling boil. You've got the salt of the bouillon, acid, and the kind of sweet mustard. Start cooking those potatoes and carrots. I think in our whole time of doing our show, I don't know if we did a proper banana bread, which is something we do a lot this time of year. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you that. And we're gonna roast our vegetables in just a second. All right, we're gonna cover this up. Let it do its thing. That smells really good. <laughs> Doesn't it? I can taste those radishes. They're a little warm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you put a horseradish in there. Yummy. Yummy, yummy. Now, this is kind of your grandmother's recipe and some things that we decided to add to it. You had some good ideas. Some peanut butter, some raisins, and oh, maybe yeah. some pecans or something like that. So, Mrs. Farmer, will you bless us with your recipe? I will do it. I have, and this is grandmother's, mm -hmm. one cup of sugar. I'll hand you that. I have a half a cup. This is lard. Yum. Half, half this a cup. This is our personal lard that we rendered from a pasture-raised pig, right. the, the leaf lard. It's precious. Two eggs. Mix that up a little bit. And I let that lard set out because it kind of softens up a little bit and see how much easier it makes it. It's like dessert almost, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, now I got two cups of flour. I'm add that in. And with the two cups of flour, I also have a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of salt. Excellent. And that's the basics. The only other thing that my grandmother used to add was chopped nuts. But you had some great ideas last night, so I added a couple things to it. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of peanut butter. You want the molasses in? I do. You want me to go ahead and do it? Put it? Yeah, whatever you think you want in there. Let's put slow as molasses. My goodness. There's one That's tablespoon. A lot. You could use more than that. It really gives it a good taste. All right, three bananas, the last ingredient. Nanners. Nanners. And I'm going to use that old-fashioned chopper. I love using it. You know, that. if you ever watch a monkey, in all seriousness, they come at it from this end. They pop oh, really? it off. Did you see how easy that was? You're a monkey. I might be. I'm a spider monkey. And what'd you do? Just pulled it like that? Just pulled it like that? You know that. what? That's Bam. my new way to do bananas. Bam. All right, so I have three bananas. And I love this. I think it's the best thing in the world. Grandma's chopper. The old choppers. I've been like banging this around. Look at that beautiful beginning of a banana bread. It looks good. We have pecans here, probably about, I don't know, what'd you say, half a cup maybe. And you said raisins. So we're... And you don't have to do either one of those. Sounds good though. To. But it really gives it a nice... A little crunch every now and then, a little bit of texture. And I like the peanut butter, and I like the molasses. It gives it a whole different flavor. It's almost like having dessert. That, that Just that little bit of molasses gives it that deep, rich flavor. That's, well, that's kind of molassy. Yes, it is. I'm 
just gonna stick it in this pan. We're gonna cook this at 350 for 50 minutes. It's kind of our dessert, isn't it? Well, last night it was our dinner. So how long does it go? We're gonna give it 50 minutes at 350. Quarter after. Alrighty. Actually 17 after. Okay, thanks. All right, so Nikki has donned her gloves and has peeled the beets and is now cutting them into smaller pieces so we can put in that pan, cover them with olive oil. We might put a little basil and thyme, maybe some rosemary. Now we were over at Lois Ellis's one time and Lois is just, everything she does is magic in the kitchen. And she did a version of this a long time ago. It was just so simple. She popped it in, popped it out and it was just absolutely lovely, like everything in her kitchen. All right. So there's our... Our beets. Our beets. Let's go ahead and toss them in there. Now we put them on a paper plate, put them in a paper bowl. I don't want to be purple. We had gloves on so we don't have a purple kitchen. Oh, what else do we want to put in? Let's put some sweet potato in there. All right. You want slices or what do you want? Yeah, slices about the same size. So then cut those in half? Probably. I like the pretty colors. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's hard to imagine how good this is with just olive oil and just a few little salt and pepper and some spice. You can put onions in there too if you want. It's healthy. This is it healthy. is healthy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and toss those in there. I got the oven preheating on about 400. Okay. Look how healthy we're being. A little salt, a little pepper. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of, Lois puts basil and oregano. Yummy. It gives it a nice little yeah. taste. But we're going to pop that in at about 400 and keep our eye on it. All right. All right, now look at the consistency. Look when the bubbles come up. You can tell that that's really thick. Yeah. How do you get that? If it's really soupy and you want it more thick and you want your consistency just a little bit thicker, we could, I call this my slurry. You take half cornstarch, half water, okay. and you just put as much as it takes to get it like you want it. I like that thick. Oh, look at that. You know, cornstarch is the best. My grandmother always said it made the best gravy. It doesn't clump like flour. Cornstarch, perfect. Absolutely. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna put the top back on. Well, not too long ago, we had some folks tell us about a lady from Fleming County who was making fried apple pies. Now, at the time we did this show, she was well into her 90s. Right. She made it to 101. Wow. She had a blessed life. Fantastic the way she just, she didn't pay any attention to the cameras. Most people, She's you know, cute. very conscious of what's going on. She She's walked in She front walked of right it. by, <laughs> and she was very matter of fact, and so sweet. She was yes. just that country sweet. So let's visit with Miss Helen one more time. She was special. She was. Loved by everyone. And her fried apple pies. Yum. We're in Fleming County in the home of Georgia, Helen Conley. Everybody calls her Helen, mm -hmm. correct? And bro. He's here too. He's here too. Now he's standing <laughs> over there. He's going to make sure that we make no mistake. He's supervising. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, what are we making tonight? Fried apple pies. One of my favorite things in the world. Is it? First right. of all, thanks for having you. Uh, yeah. For having us thank, in your kitchen. Thank you for coming. Bringing us off the street where it was really thank cold. <laughs> it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> Now, fried apple pies is probably something you've been eating all your life. Yes. Uh -huh. And did your mom make them? Yes, my mother made them. Your grandmother probably mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. her? I'm sure she did. Now, were mm -hmm. these a special treat or is this something you had fairly often? Or? Oh, we had them often. Well, we dried quite a bit of apples. And then when we have a church function up the shelter house, we take fried apple pies. Most everybody likes them. I don't know anybody that doesn't like them. No. And if they don't, they need to be taken to the doctor and examined. <laughs> now, you like your dried apples. Do you dry your own apples? Oh, yes. I dry my really? own apples. Let's and take I, a look at those. And then I soak them overnight. It takes them a while, you know, to cook. To and then bring you them back? You have to let them cool before you put them in your dough. Right. Then you couldn't put a hot apple in, a, in your dough. Did it all come apart? Now, how did you dry your apples? We've got a dehydrator. Got a dehydrator. Mm -hmm. How long does that take? At 24 hours, don't 24 hours. Mm -hmm. All right, so 
What are what are the ingredients here? It looks. I mean, I know it's. You a, want me to start? Yeah, let's start. Okay, I'll give you them if you want. I'll take them. Okay. <laughs> I'll be glad to have them. Well, we're taking flour out, and I'm going to sift it, and it's self rising. Now, Helen, you kind of the type like me. You don't measure. You just do things as you go along. Yes, sure do. I don't measure. Yeah. I just as just as I think of it. Get my spoon and make me a little hole in it. Always use some milk and put a little cooking oil in there. I guess I better turn my stove on to have my skillet hot and fry them. They might not be good if I didn't fry them. What kind of oil do you use? Canola. Canola oil? <laughs> yeah, cooking oil. And it takes quite a bit. Now you're 92, mm -hmm. your husband's 95. Yeah. <laughs> and you know they say, oh, you can't eat this, and you can't do that, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. You probably ate lard most of your life, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I'll get my milk to have to make my dough with, just to kind of make it help it a little. Now you want to use as much milk as many pies. More milk you make, more pies you can make. Uh -huh. So I do. I'll not make a full cup, so I'll just use that. Now I'm going to put my milk in my flour and stirring it up, getting it ready to make my pies with. Is this where your mom did it? Yes, the way my mother did. Now what was her name? Addie. Addie? Mm -hmm. What year Addie, was... Addie Lois, and then her mother is named Lois, as after my grandmother. And today would have been my daddy's birthday, and he was born in 1896. Wow. 17th of January. Wow, we. So I'm 92. Well, you look like you're about 58. Oh boy, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Now that, don't, don't go to the extremes. <laughs> you make me feel like I'm young, and then I might think I'm young, and I can't do what I used to do. Well, let's not go out and try to jump a fence. No. <laughs> That's interesting how you're doing that. You're just kind of taking it in. Yeah, it, just off a the little sides. bit at a time. I used to make biscuit every morning when the children was home, this way. Make my biscuits for breakfast every morning. So you're just pulling it in gradually? Mm -hmm, just a little, you get it thick. See, I learned something. The great thing about doing this show, Helen, uh -huh. is everybody does things differently. I'm sure they do. This rolling pin, my father got me for that when we first married, and he got it at a yard sale. So I really don't know how old that is. So do you and remember we, what we year? And we will be married 73 year wow. in March. So I've had this same thing. Well, that's my apples after I've already cooked them. I'll put them in the and fry them till they get brown. So you scoop just enough out to make you about yeah. a... Yeah, mm -hmm. and I try to roll them out just as thick as thin as I can handle them. Mm -hmm. They want to stick sometimes, so I change sides with them. Now, what'd you get, if you can remember, kids are so spoiled today, they get hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of stuff for Christmas. What, what do you remember getting for Christmas? I can remember maybe a stick of candy or... A, a we, stick we, of candy? Uh -huh. One we stick would, of candy. Uh, hang our stockings up on the mail, and Dad would put like an orange and an apple in that, and you know, that just tickled us to death to get that. Now, growing up, when did you, do you remember getting electricity? I, we didn't get electric till uh, our, our second son was born on the big run. Now, was that a big, was that a pretty big deal? Oh, get, it was, meant a lot to us. What, what was your thoughts when you went over and turned that light switch for the first time? We just, they just had a bulb in the ceiling. Yeah. We just thought that's wonderful. For we just had a coal all length, you know. Yeah. I don't know how the kids went to school, I mean, and learned by that. Yeah. I don't know. What is it about the dried apples, Helen, that makes it better? It's just the way it, it is. It just has a different flavor, I mm -hmm. think. Some people use this apple sauce, but I just always use to dried my apples and fix them that They're way. They're better with the dried apples, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I'm 
have to turn my pies are getting brown. Ooh, yum. Ellen, where'd you go to school at? Goddard. Goddard? Mm-hmm. The old school, it's gone now. The old school's gone? Mm-hmm. They've um, got that where the school used to be. It's in part of the cemetery that Goddard. Yeah. What year did you uh, graduate? I just I went to the eighth. Well, that's, that mm -hmm. was pretty, you know, we, they still have eighth grade educations where I went to school in eastern Kentucky, because that's usually as far as people went. Then I they, know. Then they started working in the fields or wherever. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with hard work, do you? No, I don't. I think it's good for you. I think it would help a lot of them that's on welfare, put it that way, if they work a little bit. There you go. Boy, Helen, those things are sitting there looking at me now. I don't know how long I can hold off and try. Well, I want you to eat them. That's why I'm fixing them. Oh, I want to eat them. Well, eat them. <laughs> Just as quick as they cool. Can I bring them over here? Them. Yeah, if you want to. They're probably a little hot right now. They're right there. It just, I made a mess, Helen. I'm sorry. That's all right. That right there just tastes old fashioned. It's, I remember. It seems like everywhere we went in, in years ago, the grandma was making fried mm -hmm. apple pies, and I remember that taste. Mm -hmm. In your apples, when you put the water back in them, did you put any spices in there? I put cinnamon. Just cinnamon? Mm -hmm. How much cinnamon? I just sprinkle it over them. I don't measure. Sometimes there's a difference in the cinnamon. If it's mm -hmm. stronger than others, you know, you don't have to take as much. So you just kind of do it to taste. Uh -huh. how, much, yeah. how much sugar did you, that's probably a couple cups. How much sugar did you put in there? Well, I just took a tablespoon and just dipped it out and put it in there. Just guessed at it. Oh, my goodness. And then you can taste it, you know, to see if it's mm -hmm. enough or not. You think it's sweet enough? I think it's perfect. I thought it was. Perfect. Mm -hmm. If you had a chance to tell the kids today, to, to over all that you've seen over all the years, what would you say is the best lesson a kid could learn today? What do they need to know today? I think they need to pay attention to what their parents tell them. Seems to me like a lot of kids are telling their parents what to do nowadays. Well, they do. <laughs> Maybe two and three year old. Oh, yeah. Shame. Do you remember the parents getting a switch out of a tree? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd do wonders. What happened around here? What, what was the big event that happened around Goddard in your lifetime that stuck out in your, in your, in your memory? Just when I got married, I guess. <laughs> you got married and that was 73 years ago? Yeah, so it will be. Would you marry him again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He seems like a pretty good guy. Yeah, I think he has been. And mm -hmm. he helps you out a lot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, we thank you so much for sharing your recipe I with us. I might have a flower on my hand. That's all right. I have a flower on my hand. Thank you so much for visiting with us and telling well, the story. Well, I appreciate you all coming. Well, I appreciate you having us yeah. out. Maybe we can visit in the summer. We'll do some other kind yes, of recipe. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, now I want you to look at that. That's, look at the, look at the stewish consistency of the liquid in there. Amazing. There's our beautiful, there's our beets, our squash, our sweet potatoes. I snuck one, they're really good. I know, you okay. go first. I'm gonna do the soup first. Oh yeah. Right. I'm, gonna just, I'm gonna try your the broth. Wow. You know what, mm. if, you do, if you do certain things, you follow certain rules, mm. and you find over time, if you take this over here, okay, Raul has showed me the, you know, the, the wine, the bouillon, and the currant jelly. So I'm thinking if you get that acid and you get the sweet. Oh yeah. And you do that in another realm. This is with the stout. That's good. I had a potato. This is a big bite, but I gotta do it. I need some meat too. I did just a potato. Potatoes were delicious. Have you had a I'm gonna try I'm gonna try a beet. That's amazing. You know, and the great thing about it is. All it is is olive oil. That's nice and healthy too. The sugars come out. Delish. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And look at there. I know. Just mm. put that butter on there for us. Oh. That's like dessert. <laughs> That's dessert. Mm. Mm. Yummy. Now molasses has its own taste and its own thing. It has that deep, rich taste that really, really goes well with the bananas. Oh yeah. And the peanut butter. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Farmer. <laughs> I really want to wrap this thing up so we can eat. I want to too. And, oh my, look at that. Okay, if somebody would come up to you, Mrs. Farmer, and say very nicely, Mrs. Farmer, 
how would I find these recipes? I tell them, go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. We have 800 million recipes over there. And wow. if they wanted to come to our Facebook page mm -hmm. and join, is that a is that a really hard process or fairly it, simple? It's kind of hard. You hit like. I may go over there and get on there. You should. So Most Farmer, it's all about. Good times. Good friends. And super, super good eats. We'll see you next week with a brand new show. And I'm going to eat I'm lots and lots of stew. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.